Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and first, we welcome back Rose and Mark. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two shots at the Pointless final, and this is your second chance. Remind us how you did. Didn't do very well, oh, Alexander. No. It was those rodents. The first range, yes. Rodents. They Nasty did for you. Little rodents. Oh. What would you What would you like to come up this first round to make sure you get on through the through the game? Um, musicals. Musicals. Yes. You'd be surprised how often that comes up as people's not not as a question, just as everyone's favourite question, the one everyone would like to have. Never comes up as a question. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, very best of luck to the pair of you. I'm sure we will see you beyond the first round. That's my hunch. Um, next, we welcome back Brooke and Laura. Remind us how you did last time. Um, we got to the head-to-head -head and then we basically bombed because I thought it was being really clever with a Lady Gaga answer. Was, you were, uh... Do you know what? You were too clever by half. That's what you were. <laughs> too clever. A fabulously obscure video phone, in yeah. fact, was the song. Laura, what do you do in your spare time? A lot of knitting. Do you really? Yes. Um, I used to run one of the biggest knitting groups in the country um, and now I just do a lot of knitting at home and I've got a little group of knitters in my local area. What's the biggest thing you've knitted? Oh, blankets, I guess. Blankets. Jumpers, cardigans. Very, very good pastime. Well, very best of luck to the pair of you. Um, let's hope we see you in the head-to-head -head again this time. Um, next, we welcome back Liz and Matt. Liz S, I notice you are yes. today. Yeah. You, you've, you've gone out and got initials since we uh -huh. last saw you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, remind us what happened to you last time. We had the opposite problem to Brooke and Laura, really, in that we weren't clever enough. We were a bit careful, maybe. A little bit careful. It was yeah. airlines, wasn't it? Was it was airlines. airlines. Yeah, we got, did for you. got snagged on airlines. You did, you did. Yeah. Um, what would you like to see come up, Matt, today? Ooh, something around words, etymology, grammar, something like that. Liz? Chemistry, biology, human body. Right. Wow, you've got it all sorted out between you. It's fantastic. Apart from airlines. Airline. Just airlines. <laughs> yeah. A small airline gap in your knowledge. And finally, we've got Lillian and Liz B. Hi. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? We're sisters. Your sister. Yes. Oh, and where are you from? Gateshead on oh, Washington. Lovely. Lovely to hear your accents here. What do you hope is going to come up, Lillian? History, royal family, uh, food and drink. Bones. Food and drink. Bones? <laughs> That's a good one. Bones, Richard. That's good. We did bones the other day, didn't we? We do. We, we do bones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're doing it this afternoon. We'll find out. But. Uh, very best of luck to the pair of you, Lillian and Liz. We will find out more about all of you throughout the show. There is only one person left for me to introduce. He's the guardian of everything unusual and obscure. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hiya. Hello. Well, Richard. Good afternoon to you. Ahoy there. How are you today? I'm extremely well. Extremely Excellent. well. Um, what, what sort of a show have we got? Well, we've got three returning pairs today, haven't we? Which is uh, which will be very interesting. Battlers joined once again. Obviously, Brooke and Laura uh, went furthest last time, so they'll be the team to beat, I suspect. But uh, Liz S, who used to be called Liz, do you remember when oh. Liz S was called Liz? I know, I do. Oh, In so the good grand. old days. Yeah. I think they were very disappointed with their performance last time. So uh, I, I think they've got something to prove today. Haven't they, though? They have. Haven't they, though? They have, yeah. Just wanted to make sure we got that sorted. Yes, yes, they have. Yeah. <laughs> now, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. What everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,500. <laughs> Right, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so be very careful that's not you. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then they will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Cricket. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Right, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many cricket counties 
as they could. Cricket counties, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the county cricket sides of England and Wales that had first-class status at the beginning of 2011. That's the 18 counties who play in the county championship, not any of the minor counties or anything like that. So the 18 first-class cricket counties. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Right, now, Mark and Rose, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. So, Rose, cricket. Do you follow cricket? Uh, I like test cricket. Mm. Not so much the, the, the county, county cricket. cricket, yeah. But you, you're, you're also dimly aware of county cricket. They often talk oh, yes, about who, yes. who's played for which county, don't yeah. they? What's the most obscure cricket county you can think of? Well, I will call from where I come from, Durham. Durham. Yeah. Very good choice. You're hoping to score as few points as possible with Durham. Let's see if it is a cricketing county. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Durham. That's right. And it goes 29, Rose. Not a bad score at all. <laughs> 29 points for Durham. Yeah, uh, well done, Rose. A useful innings of 29. It's the newest first-class county, Durham. Granted, uh, that status in 1991. Very good. Thank you so much, Richard. And now, Laura, how comfortable are you with this category? Extremely uncomfortable. Extremely <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah, I right. know nothing. Do you follow any sports at all? No. <laughs> Did you and Brooke, between you, just hope that you'd just somehow get over the sports question if it came yeah. up? Yeah. It's always slightly inevitable, isn't it, in this game? Well, yeah. In some sort of quiz, there's always going to be a sports question. But you might have an answer, though. I have an answer, whether it's right or not, I mm. don't have the foggiest, except for I know that there is a large cricket playing field near where I used to go to school. OK. And I have seen people playing cricket there, and so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Essex. You're going to go with Essex? Essex, you've seen people playing cricket there? It might It be stands right. to reason. You're hoping that Essex is correct, and if it is, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see if Essex is a correct answer, and how many people said it. Essex. Very well done. Could be quite a good answer, this one, I feel. 34. <laughs> Not a bad score at all, Laura. Not bad at all. 34 for Essex, Richard. Yeah, Essex. Alistair Cook, of course, one of the many people who play cricket in Essex. And Graham Gooch in the good old days as well, didn't he? Played cricket in Gucci. Essex. Liz. Liz S. Hello. Remember, we are looking for cricket counties. Yeah. How good are you on cricket? I should be good at cricket um, because my grandfather's brother used to play for one of the county cricket teams. Um, my mum used to score. Is it a nice obscure one? She used to, no. she used to, she used to score. Yeah, for, for my granddad's team as well. So the whole family is... So you are quite, you're quite cricket-oriented? Yeah, but not... Not really. Only the obvious ones, mm. which is a shame. So I'm going to take a bit of a guess and, and go for Berkshire. You're going to go for Berkshire. OK, you're having to score as few points as possible with Berkshire. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Berkshire. Oh, no. Bad luck, Liz. Bad luck. Berkshire is a wrong answer, I'm afraid, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Berkshire are not a first-class county. They don't play in the county championships. They're uh, one of the minor counties, which we're, we're not allowing. Lillian? I'm not very good at cricket. Do you follow it at all? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No. Are you ever, do you ever listen to it in, the, in a sort of no. passive way? No. I think I know one certainty and one I'm not sure of, so I'm going to go with what I think is certain. OK, well, it's a high-scoring round, as it turns out. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. I have a hunch they play cricket there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, well, let's see if Yorkshire is a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Yorkshire. Down he goes, 44. Not bad. Not bad at all, Lillian. Very well done. 44 for Yorkshire, Richard. Yeah, arguably the, uh, the most successful of all county uh, cricket teams. They've won the title 31 times, Yorkshire. Oh. But they don't go on about it. That's the good thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we are halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand at this stage. Lowest score so far, Rose. Very well done. Durham, fantastic answer, as it turns out. Laura, 34. Not a bad answer at all. And uh, Lillian, 44. And then Liz S. 
Yes. And even before she had the S, she was she was better at it. <laughs> I, mean, she, I mean, she was. I think it's unbalanced just slightly. I think is what's yeah, happened. Yeah, the S has just taken us. Yeah, of, lost of, some symmetry somewhere. Yeah. Luckily, Matt knows everything about county cricket, so he will be able to delve into the recesses of his mind and pluck out a really obscure answer. Yes, Matt, you know what you have to do. We're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for cricket counties. Liz B. Lillian pulled one out the bag there with Yorkshire. Are you going to need to reach as far into the bag, or do you have a few at your disposal? Um, do you know a bit about cricket? Not a lot. Uh, Twickenham. <laughs> no, nothing about cricket at all. I'm hoping Twickenham's there, but. <laughs> your, is that going to be your answer? Yes. Twickenham. Yeah. There is your red line. You will see. You are saying Twickenham. We are looking for cricket counties. Twickenham, your answer gets you below that red line. You are through to the next round. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said Twickenham. Yeah. Bad luck, Liz B. Unfortunately, that's an incorrect answer. Well, you scored a maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to 144. Oh. Richard. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Liz. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's wrong for a number of reasons, which is good. <laughs> that's something. Uh, yeah, don't play county cricket, mainly mainly because it's not a county. That's the big... That's the main... That's the reason they were chucked out. <laughs> it's, uh, it's for not being a county. They, 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 they don't like that sort of thing in county they, cricket, do they? Oh. So we come to you, Matt. Huey, I think, is the word. Mm. You've just been thrown a lifeline by Liz B there. Remember, we are looking for cricket counties. If you can score 43 or less with this answer, you are most definitely through to the next round. Right. And you happen to know a lot about county cricket, I seem to think. I don't, unfortunately. Oh, really? No. What are your, what are your hobbies, Matt? Um, I like to play poker, um, play the piano. I play a lot of blues piano, jazz Do piano. Do you? I mm. enjoy playing that sort of thing. Yeah, but cricket isn't one of my hobbies. Well, it was for a it while, isn't. when I was about ten. It sort of goes quite high. A lot of people who like jazz like cricket. I think. Is that right? <laughs> I, you know, there's a theory I've just made up, but I think it's true. <laughs> I think it's, it's true, because of like... the high boredom threshold, is it? <laughs> I, think, I think it could be. Yeah. It could be to do with that. Or it's just, it could be people who like, to, like the intricacies of, of things that other people might find boring. <laughs> so then, Matt. Well, I have vague memories of hearing the phrase Kent County Cricket Team. You have vague memories of Very, Kent. Yep, there's a bell ringing somewhere there's in the back of your head. a bell ringing somewhere, back of your head. OK, let's find out. You need to score 43 points or less. Here is your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the next round. Let's see if Kent will take you there. Is it correct? And how many people said it? Kent. Very well done. Will it take you down below the line? Yes, it will. Look at that. 30 for Kent. Very well answered. 30 gives you a total of 130 and it sees you through to the next round. Richard. Yeah, well done, Matt. Of course, Kent County Cricket Club is one of those things you've got to be enormously careful when you say. <laughs> Very careful. I wouldn't want to say it again. No. <laughs> Very well done. Well, that was, that was a, a, an important score for you there, Matt. You are through to the next round. And I'm afraid, Liz B and Lillian, we will be saying goodbye to you at the end of this round because your score of 144 is so brilliantly high that no one, even if they try their hardest, <laughs> will be able to overtake it. Okay. So we come to you, Brooke. You are scot-free. <laughs> you can have a bit of fun with this round and yeah. see if you can find a really low-scoring, obscure cricketing county. What are you going to say? Well, I'm just trying to think of different counties I know, and I don't want to say one and think and it be wrong. So I'm <laughs> going to go for one that I think might actually be right rather than um, use the opportunity of saying something silly. So I'm going to go for Sussex. You're going to go for Sussex? Yeah. Very good indeed. Sussex is what you are saying. You are through to the next round, come what may, so there's no red line. Let's see. If it's right and if it is, let's see how many people said Sussex. There we are. Sussex is right. And down it comes to 35. Very good score, taking your total up to 69. Richard Sussex. Yes, good old Sussex by the sea, God's own county. Uh, first won the title in 2003, had never won it before, and have uh, won it a couple of times since as well. OK, so Mark and Rose. Mark and Rose, you're on 29. You can score what you like here. <laughs> you are through to the next round. You've done it. You've broken the first round jinx. Yes. Mark, do you follow cricket at all? I've played quite a bit of cricket over the years, but only at sort of 
village level and things like that. So. Not, at, not at county level? Not at county level, no. unfortunately. But you're no. aware of county cricket? I'm aware of county cricket, yes. Yeah. I sort of followed it quite a lot when I was younger. OK, so, so you might be able to pull our lowest score. Can I just say, our lowest score to date was your mother's brilliant score on Durham. Right. I think you might be able to find a, a more obscure county, and I shall be disappointed if you don't, in fact. <laughs> I've got a few in my head, but mm. um, it's a toss-up between North Ants and Glamorgan. I don't know which one to go for, so Glamorgan. You're going to go for Glamorgan? Yes. Very good. Glamorgan, you are saying? Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. No red line for you, of course. You're through, come what may. There we are. Will it come down below 29? Let's see. Yes, it did. Very well done, Mark. You've done everything expected of you. You've disappointed neither me nor your mother. You've scored 24, and that <laughs> takes your total up to 53. Richard Glamorgan. Yes, well done, Mark. It's the only Welsh uh, first-class cricket club. Now, I know plenty of people at home will know all 18 of these. The, the question is, which are the more obscure of those counties? There's no pointless answers at all. The most obscure of all oh, is North Ants. Uh, wow. We've only scored you nine points, but uh, it was the best answer there. And Leicestershire and Derbyshire both on uh, 11 there. Let's take a look at the, uh, the highest scoring answers, the ones that most of our, our 100 people said. Uh, there's Surrey on 36. Lancashire also on 36. And they went like this, beaten by Yorkshire, which we already had with, uh, with 44. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid it's Lillian and Liz oh. B. Oh, oh, oh dear, dear. What a shame. What we, a shame. We, we bowled a googly at you there in the first <laughs> round. I mean, so unfair. It's been fantastic having you on the show. What would you, you have liked to have come up this round? What would have been your, your Football dream? Football would have been all right. Football. History. Just not cricket. In history. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it was cricket. However, I'm sure next time we will see you triumph and, uh, and flourish all the way through to the final. Thank um, you very look forward much. to that Thank very you. much Thank indeed. You. Thanks so much for playing. Thank Lovely you very much. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs will be making it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of these teams will be leaving us at the end of this round. Just try and make sure it's not you. The category for round two this afternoon is animation. Animation. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, our second round question this afternoon concerns cartoon couples and their surnames. Cartoon couples and their surnames. So in this round, we're about to show you a list of famous animated couples from TV and film. We asked 100 people to tell us their surnames. Richard? Yeah, we're going to show you six pairs of names in, uh, in each pass. All you've got to do is tell us the surnames. The more obscure the answer is, the fewer points you're going to score. If you give us an incorrect answer, an incorrect surname, you're going to score 100 points. And any cartoon obsessives at home, see if you can get all 12. Right, OK, so we're looking for the surnames of these cartoon couples. And we have got... Homer and Marge, George and Jane, Bob and Helen, Roger and Jessica, Fred and Wilma, Hank and Peggy. Let me read those one more time. Homer and Marge, George and Jane, Bob and Helen, Roger and Jessica, Fred and Wilma, Hank and Peggy. So then, Mark. There are the couples. You need to furnish us with a surname of a nice, obscure couple. Now, how did you feel when this came up? Cartoon couples. Were you thinking this is perfect? No. Or were you thinking not necessarily. help? I think I'm going to play it safe. And I go for Roger and Jessica Rabbit. Roger and Jessica Rabbit, you're saying, playing it safe. Let's hope it doesn't cost you too dear. Let's see if it's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said Roger and Jessica Rabbit. It's correct. 59. That is a high score there, Mark. But it's a whole lot better than 100. Richard, Roger yeah. and Jessica Rabbit. Yeah, big score, but safe answer. From, of course, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit from, uh, from 1988. OK, Richard, thank you very much. Brooke, remember, we are looking for the surnames of these cartoon characters. I was going to go for Roger and Jessica. That I was well excited when that came up, actually. Right. Um, I know two for definite, and then there's one I know what programme they're from, but I can't remember their surname. 
and then the others I'm not sure about. So I guess I'm just going to have to play it safe because I had no idea how to guess the others. Well, this is music to Mark and Rose's ear. So I'm going to go for Fred and Wilma uh, Flintstone. Fred and Wilma Flintstone. OK, you're hoping to score as few points as possible with this. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Fred and Wilma Flintstone. Well, he's right. Oh, it's a costly one, Brooke. 84 that scores you. Richard. Yes, big, big score, that, isn't it, 84? Um, celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2010, the Flintstones. Isn't that amazing? Interesting. They were the first couple ever to be shown in bed together on US primetime. Sh shortly followed by uh, Wilmer and Barney, and that's where all the trouble started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Liz S. Liz S, this is playing right into your hands. 59, high score. Brooke, <laughs> on the 84, even higher score. And look, you've, you can talk us through, talk us through the board. OK, well, Homer and Marge, that's, I can do that one. That's the definite one. But it's whether it's more or less than Fred and Wilma. Yeah. Um, George and Jane and Bob and Helen, I'm not really sure. But Hank and Peggy, I've got a feeling it might be from King of the Hill. But I don't know his surname, but it might be Hill. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> OK, that's a tough one. Well, Matt and I said before we come on that we were going to go for it this time and take a few risks, because last time we were a bit safe. So I'm going to go for Hank and Peggy and say Hill. Hank and Peggy, you are saying Hill. Let's see if it's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. It's right! <laughs> Very well done, Liz S. Look at that, a wonderful answer. It scores you nine points. Yeah. Hank and Peggy. She, I tell you, she's earned that S. Yeah, you really you have earned it S now. Uh, that's very, very well played. Uh, nine points for Hank and Peggy Hill. Because uh, if you had gone for Homer and Marge Simpson, uh, you would have just got 85 points. <laughs> so, you know, you have really, really helped Matt out there, I think. Uh, George and Jane, do you know that one? It's, it's an American one, really. They're, they're, they're the Jetsons. Would have scored you eight points. Now, Bob and Helen is very good, obscure animation knowledge. Well done if you've got this at home. Do you know Bob and Helen? No. OK, if I give you the answer, it won't even help you. It's Bob and Helen Parr. It's a pointless answer. Better known as Mr Incredible and Elastigirl. Mm. Ah. Bob and Helen Parr. Very well very done if you've got good. that. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at those scores. It's a broad field there. Liz S, what a fabulous answer that was. Oh, I was trying to... Matt, I think, was... Were you sure of that, Matt? Uh, I had the same suspicion. So I was same pleased, suspicion. I was very Pretty good. <laughs> very well done indeed. Then Mark and Rose, 59. That was a high score. But actually, you've been helped out by Brooke's choice of Fred and Wilma Flintstone. Obviously, a, a very, very popular answer there on 84. So, yes, Laura and Rose, if anything, it's between you and the next pass. You're each going to have to find some nice, obscure answers um, and hope for the best. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more animated couples on the board. And here they are. Randy and Sharon, Peter and Lois, Stan and Francine, Carl and Ellie, Barney and Betty, Ned and Maud. Let me read those one more time. Randy and Sharon, Peter and Lois, Stan and Francine, Carl and Ellie, Barney and Betty, Ned and Maud. Now, remember, we are looking for their surnames, and you are trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Matt, you're in a very, very strong position now, thanks to Liz S's fantastic low score. You need to score 74 or less with this, and you are thereby sure of a place in the next round. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I know one for sure, and a second one I know is in there somewhere but isn't jumping to the front of my mind at the moment. So I might have to renege on the agreement to go for the obscure ones <laughs> and go okay. for something safe. Well, Liz has earned you that luxury, I She say. has, indeed. And I'm going to go for Peter and Lois Griffin. Peter and Lois Griffin from... Family Guy. Very good indeed. Peter and Lois Griffin, there is the red line. Below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see if Peter and Lois Griffin is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Very well done. You are through to the head-to-head. -head. Down it goes. Griffin.
Griffin, a fabulous answer, scores you 17 and takes your total up to 26. Richard. Yeah, well played, Matt. Peter and Lois Griffin from Family Guy. It was cancelled twice, Family Guy, and there, there was an online petition of over 100,000 people who forced uh, Fox to bring it back. Thank you very much, Richard. So then, Laura, we come to you. Remember, we are looking for the surnames of these cartoon characters. You have the biggest mountain to climb here. And Do you I, watch a lot of television? I do, and I'm completely blanked out. And the only one, well, there's two up there that I knew, and the Peter and Lois Griffin one was the one that I thought, definitely, I'll go for mm. that one. And the other one I know, I know is going to be a high scorer, so I'm really stuck. Um, now, it is funny. Everyone says, you say, what would you like to come up? Musicals? TV. Film and television comes up a lot. And nearly every time a film and television category comes up, people actually think, oh, this, this is very hard, very hard indeed. So I would say film and television, but actually what I would mean by that was, I like watching film and television. Yeah. <laughs> Could you ask questions about the things I watched no. yesterday? Yeah. OK, well, the only one I know I'm going to have to go for, because I've really can't even think of anything to throw in there for the others. So I'm going to go for Barney and Betty Rubble. Barney and Betty Rubble. Very well done. There they are, one up from the bottom. Barney and Betty Rubble. Let's see if that is right. Obviously, there's no red line for you because you are the high scorers. You've got to hope this goes down as far as it possibly can and that Rose scores high. Let's see if Barney and Betty Rubble is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. 64. That is a high score there. That takes your total up to 148, Laura. Yes, Barney and Betty Rubble, parents of the world's strongest boy, Bam Bam. It was originally made for adults, the Flintstones. The first two series were, were sponsored by Cigarette Company. No. Yeah. Um, so then, Rose, we come to you. Laura has just taken their high score up to 148. If you can score 88 or less with this answer, Rose... Oh, she's shaking her head. She's, this, could, this could be a moment for you, Laura and Brooke. You might be thrown a lifeline here by Rose. If you can score 88 or less, you're through to the next round. Nope. Talk us through the board. Is there anything there? Nothing. The only one I knew was Barney and Betty. I don't know any of the others. I'll just have to guess at the name and see <laughs> Carl and Ellie Walker. <laughs> Carl and Ellie Walker, you're going to say. Sooner or later, one of these guesses is going to <laughs> get somebody through. Is today going to be the day? Let's find out. There is your red line. If Carl and Ellie Walker get you below it, you go into the pointless annals. <laughs> let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Carl and Ellie Walker. No. Oh. Bad luck, nope. Rose. That scores you 100 points, taking your total up to 159. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Rose. Carl and Ellie, actually, it's Carl Friedrichsen from Up, the star of Up, and his uh, departed wife was Ellie, so very tough answer. Would have scored you one point. Very well done if, uh, if you got that. Ned and Maud uh, is... Flanders. The Flanders, of course, from The Simpsons. That was 20 points. Stan and Francine. Uh, it's, it's another Seth MacFarlane show, like, uh, like Family Guy. It's American Dad. Ah. Scores yeah. you three points. And Randy and Sharon is a, a pointless answer. Do you know it? Well done at home if you know they are Stan's parents from South Park. Very Randy good. and Sharon Marsh. Well, thank you very much, Richard. So, at the end of round two, a very, very tough round, that. The losing pair with the highest score, Rose and Mark on 159. Guys, I'm so sorry. Right. No, that was really tough. It was. <laughs> Rose, musicals. I know. Just didn't it didn't come it didn't up come at up. all. No, no. I'm so sorry. No, what, are you, what are you going to take away from your pointless experience? Meeting you. Oh, Rose. And Richard. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> and Richard, of course. And Richard, of course. <laughs> yes. That's very nicely added. <laughs> well, it's been fabulous having you on the show. I'm so sorry we say goodbye to you so early on in this game, but you've been great contestants. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are going to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So, very well done, Liz S, Matt, Brooke and Laura. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. 
Now, you're going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question, and the pair who get the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, so here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many official languages of the United Nations as they could. Official languages of the United Nations, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the six official languages of the United Nations into which all of their documents are translated as of the start of 2011, which is the most obscure of the six official UN languages. OK, thanks very much, Liz and Matt, because you've played best throughout the show so far. You get to go first. We are looking for official UN languages. Mm. OK, consensus has been reached. What are you going to say? We're going to say German. You're going to say German. Brooke and Laura, you can uh, talk out loud. Take us through your reasoning. So I'm just trying to think of languages mostly used sort of in mainland Europe and the West. So English, German, French, French Italian, Italian, Spanish. And there's one weird one which will probably be the good answer. <laughs> um, I, I can't think what it would be. So what do you think is going to be less? I think maybe Italian or Spanish would be less. Let's common. say Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, that's fine. With me. OK, we're going to go with You're Spanish. You're going to go with Spanish. So we have German, we have Spanish. Liz and Matt have said German. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said German. <sighs> oh, bad luck. German incorrect. Yeah. Very interesting. Brooke and Laura have gone for Spanish. Well, at this stage, that just needs to be correct. That's all it needs for you to win this question. Spanish, let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. 69, a high score, but who cares? You've won that question. After the first question, 1-0 to Brooke and Laura. Richard. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at uh, all six answers. I'm afraid German wasn't there, but there's Arabic at the bottom, which uh, scored 15, Chinese 27, Russian 31, Spanish 69, French 95, and English right at the top there on 99. You have to speak one of those six official languages, and it's simultaneously translated into the others. If you want to speak anything else, you have to bring your own translator, who then translates it into one of those and it goes on down the line. OK, here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Martin Clunes comedies as they could. Martin Clunes comedies, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any TV sitcom or comedy drama in which Martin Clunes has starred in at least two episodes. We're not looking for panel shows and that sort of thing, things where he played himself, but Martin Clunes sitcoms and comedy dramas on British TV. OK, thank you very much. Brooke and Laura, you get to go first this time. No, okay. Okay, we're going to go for Doc Martin. Doc Martin, say yeah. Brooke and Laura. Doc Martin. Now, Liz and Matt, you have to win this point to stay in the game. You have to win this question. If Brooke and Laura win this, they are straight through to that final. Talk us through your thinking. We only had two. One was Doc Martin. <laughs> and the other one is the most obvious one. Uh, so we're going to have to go for that. We, I don't... Have you got anything else that you can remember? Nope. So it's going to have to be Men Behaving Badly. Men Behaving Badly, Doc <laughs> Martin. OK, in the order they were given. Brooke and Laura, Doc Martin. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's correct. 52, that scores you, <laughs> Doc Martin. Liz, S and Matt have gone for men behaving badly. You suspect this will be a high-scoring one. Let's find out. Let's see how many people said it. Men behaving badly. Oh, 83. <sighs> so, after two questions, Brooke and Laura are through to the final. 2-0. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, very unlucky there. So, as at the start of 2011, these are the answers on the board. There's five pointless answers. No Place Like Home, the, uh, the 80s sitcom. That was one of his very early roles. He played one of the sons. Jeeves and Worcester, he was Cyril Fotheringay Phipps. 
Uh, gone to the Dogs with Harry Enfield, D-Mob with Griff Reese jones all at number 20 with Maureen Lippmann. And some of the better known ones, William and Mary, he was in, only scored one point. Reggie Perrin, he was in the, the remake of that, which people didn't seem to like. I thought it was rather good. Mm. You were in it, weren't you? Mm. <laughs> it's very good. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Didn't you have you had an affair with his wife, didn't you? Brilliant. Yeah, but not while I was doing Reggie Perrin. <laughs> Uh, that would have scored you 24 points, and there's the two answers we've had. Doc Martin with 52 and Men Behaving Badly with 83. Thanks very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Liz and Matt. Oh, bad <laughs> luck. German. Who would have thought that wasn't an official language at the UN? Liz and Matt, you've yeah. done fantastically well. You've played very well. You know, you've, you've taken us round the houses. I mean, very nearly. We had some high scores, rescued by low scores. <laughs> and here we come to the head-to-head, -head, and I'm afraid you are out in straight sets. Um, just tough categories for you, I'm afraid. Um, but you've been great contestants. Thanks very much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for Brooke and Nora, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> Congratulations, Brooke and Laura. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,500. Now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. We haven't had any pointless answers on the show today. You only have to find one now to go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can go for any one of these three options. Celebrities, Ooh. education, classic pop. OK. Right. Celebrities or classic pop? Yeah, <laughs> definitely between those it's two. It's between celebrities or classic pop. Do you want to go celebs? I'm thinking classic pop. Okay. More, like. we'll go Are you sure that's okay? Yeah, I think that's okay. 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 Classic we're going to go pop. for classic pop. You're going to go pop. for classic pop. Yes. From the world of classic pop, whatever that means, what would you like to come up? What sort of category would really suit you? Um, I don't know. Probably like '90s pop because we were both sort of okay. young and at yeah. school. Do you then. don't like? Do you like pop of of your of your preferred fashion vintage? <laughs> Anything from the 30s to 50s? Anything I, I know that? some, but yeah. uh, no. not probably enough to, to think yeah. of three pointless answers. 90s um. when we were young, not 40s when I look like I'm married. <laughs> right, you are. OK, well, let's find out what that question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Beach Boys singles as they could. Beach Boys singles. Richard. We're looking for any single released by the Beach Boys or which credits them as a featured artist to reach the UK top 40 before the start of 2011. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that £2,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Okay. I don't know any. <laughs> that was easy. Um, OK, so there's Surf in USA. Yeah. There's... Well, there's a song called Wouldn't It Be Nice. Well, I think yeah. it's called Wouldn't It Be Nice. Yeah. Um, and... Oh, come on, we've got to think of something else. Um, uh, yeah, I really didn't expect to be something like this. No, I really don't know. We don't know anything about the Beach Boys. <laughs> My dad went to see them when he was young. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're just going to have to make one up, like... Beach bums. <laughs> <laughs> Hang ten. Hang ten, OK. We're OK, going... you have your three answers. Yeah. We'll yeah. stop the clock there. 23 seconds in hand. We were looking for Beach Boys singles. I now need your three answers. What are they? Go for it, So, there's Surfing USA. Surfing USA. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? And the fabulous new <laughs> Beach Boys classic, just unearthed, Hang remastered. Ten. <laughs> Hang ten. <laughs> OK, of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? We'll put that last. And do you want to put this, this new remastered... I think Hang 10 needs to go first. Hang yeah. 10 first. OK. The suspense would be too much if you have to wait. Definitely. OK, well, let's see. We'll put them up on the board in that order. Here they are. Hang 10. <laughs> Surfing USA. And Wouldn't It Be Nice? OK, we were looking for Beach Boys' top 40 singles. This was your least confident answer. In fact, one you crafted before our very eyes. 
But maybe, I keep saying this, maybe one of these homemade answers is actually going to be a, a pointless answer. You never know. You only have to find one pointless answer to win that £2,500 jackpot. Let's see if your first answer, Hang 10, is indeed a Beach Boys song. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Hang 10. Bad luck. We, 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 we kind of knew that was unlikely to be a, a top 40 hit it for the Beach like Boys. It sounds like it could be a Beach Boys it, song, though. It does. It does. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. £2,500. How do you spend that? Oh, I would probably buy some clothes. <laughs> Brooke? I'd pay off some of my student debt and overdraft and boring things like that. Oh, and very, then buy some clothes. Good. And then buy some clothes on top of that. Very good. OK, well, let's hope nobody said your next answer. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win that jackpot of £2,500. Let's see how many people said Surfing USA. Well, it's right. It's right. This has to go all the way down to zero for you to walk off with that jackpot of £2,500. Down it goes. Down into the 20s. 24. Not bad. That's a perfectly respectable score in normal play. Sadly, in this round, it's either pointless or bust, so I'm afraid it's, it's bust. Um, you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. Here is your last answer. Wouldn't it be nice? This was the answer you had the most confidence in. This has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £2,500. Let's see how many people said, wouldn't it be nice? luck. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that vital pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £2,500, which rolls over to the next show. But you have been fantastic contestants and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. So, well done. <laughs> so, Richard, what were the pointless answers? Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't accept it? Was, it was the B-side of uh, God Only Knows, which, uh, which was, uh, would have scored you seven points. When it was released as a single in its own right, it uh, went nowhere near the top 40. I'll show you the wrong answers. Do It Again, which was a number one single. That was pointless. Wipe Out, which uh, they had a hit with, with uh, Fat Boys. That was pointless. Break Away, another top ten single. That was pointless. Uh, two more top ten singles there. Lady Linda from 1979 in Heroes and Villains. Those were pointless. There's Darling. Friends, When I Grow Up To Be A Man, one of their first ever hits in 1964, and Wild Honey. I hope you didn't recognise any of those, I suspect you didn't, and very well done at home, uh, if you got any of them. Well, does that make you feel a bit better now you've seen the pointless answers? A they were, bit. Yeah. We could have said, wipe out something we could have guessed, though. That's yeah. in the same realm as Hang 10. Yeah. It is. Yeah. We were very close with Hang 10. Very <laughs> close with Hang 10. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Brooke and Laura. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Great contestants. Thank you. <laughs> So nobody's won our jackpot today, which means it rolls over, and next time we'll be playing for £3,500. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>